hello, good evening. Whoever is watching, feel free to say hi. We'll wait a minute for people to get notified that this is happening and then we'll start chatting. And even if nobody comes on, I will just chat to myself. Either way, people will find this interesting. So hello to whoever is watching. I'm just writing down some extra supplements that I forgot to add. Oh look! <laughs> I turn away and now here's everyone. Leanne, Tarina, I had a feeling you would make it, Tarina. Allison, hi. Jackie, hi. I hope you enjoy this. Carmen, I hope this is helpful for you. Alicia, hi. Carla, hi. Shelly, hi. Andrea, hi. Annie, I expected you here. Jeanette, hi. Lisa, hi. Uh, I still have to reply to you, Lisa and Leanne. Cara, hi. Okay, let's get into this because um, if you know me, which most of you do, I like to talk a lot and I get easily sidetracked. So I'm going to try and stay on the plan or the agenda for this evening. And then I will look for questions towards the end. Otherwise, I've noticed if I try to answer questions as I'm talking, I'll get sidetracked. And then it could go anywhere. And then I've only covered five supplements and it was pointless. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to really discuss my top 10 supplements, which many of you will know. And you're like, well, why the hell would I want to know Shemaine's top 10 supplements? Well, one is because I recommend them to a lot of people. So you probably want to know why am I recommending them? How are we taking them? What time of the day? What time, what dosage? But also many of you know that I do take great care of my health. Like I do lead by example. Um, and a lot of people are curious, like, well, what am I using? And a lot of people will say, what are you using? Because I'll say, I usually recommend this to clients because I'm always conscious of costs and accessibility and like I try to go for low hanging fruit where I can uh, but people will say well no I don't want to know what you're recommending to clients which is still good what are you using yourself because sometimes I will use the higher quality stuff because again like this is my job I have to test a lot of stuff I want to know where the quality is and so on. Anyone else before we get going? So, Kara, welcome to the group. You're new, I believe. Ashley, hi. Laurie, hi. Laurie, I think I got an email from someone you know. I haven't replied yet. So, for those of you that don't know, I am Shmay Lini. I'm a nutritional therapist, amongst other things. Uh, I'm very annoying according to my family. I'm a personal trainer, but I'm also a certified iridologist, I'm a biohacker, I'm certified in sports nutrition, pre and postnatal nutrition, like a lot of stuff. But none of that even matters. What matters is my experience and uh, working with people and what I've found. So welcome to the group. So, okay, let's go through the list first, and please do take notes. Like, this is going to be quite informative. Catherine, hi. You must be waiting on your shift to start, Catherine. Well, hopefully, you can watch as much as this. Okay, so I'm going to go through the list first, like my top 10. Really, I have a lot of favorite supplements. Like, this probably will deserve a part two. Um, so, I might title this part one. So we'll go through the list and then I'll explain why. So number one of mine, and this, let's just say that we were all limited to the amount of supplements we could buy. The government or whoever said you can only buy 10 supplements. What do you pick? Like that's it, that's your limit. So these are mine. Molecular hydrogen is number one. Many of you expected that. Digestive enzymes, number two. Krill is number three, so that's pure krill oil. Then I have ginkgo biloba, which might surprise a few of you, but I have spoke about this a lot before. GABA, of course, is number five. Then I have magnesium citrate. I'll explain, of course. That's number six. Then I have D3, and that would include K2, because they kind of go hand in hand. Then I have vitamin C, 
And then number nine, which is a supplement because it does supplement your diet, is apple cider vinegar. Then I have whey protein isolate as number 10. And then I do have a few kind of bonuses that I'll kind of like throw in at the end, like if, if, if I won a prize and they said, okay, you can pick another, say six, I have another list. So let's start first with molecular hydrogen. I'm gonna kind of fly through these, but I will explain as best I can to help you understand. So a lot of people don't know what molecular hydrogen too. It's basically two hydrogen atoms. That's what hydrogen is. It's the smallest element in the universe, which means that it can penetrate nearly all substances. Like even when we're preparing it, we have to be very careful. Like you can't prepare molecular hydrogen in plastic. It has to be in glass or ceramic because it's the smallest molecule in the universe that we know of right now. Then it can penetrate through most substances very, very easily. So how would you get it? Well, it is hydrogen gas. So, I mean, you could get a true gas, but most of us don't have access to that. Unless you're working in a laboratory or you're in a hospital, and even the hospital here, hospitals here don't have them, you'd be wanting to be in like a Japanese hospital. Nearly every Japanese hospital provides molecular hydrogen as a therapeutic to their patients. Um, but we want to get it through a tablet. So you can get a tablet which is basically the hydrogen which is bound to um, activators which is magnesium which is great because most people are deficient in magnesium. And when you drop the tablet into water, clean water preferably, then you're going to see a reaction happen. The magnesium will cause a reaction with the oxygen in the water and then this releases the hydrogen. And when you, you'll see this happening as like a cloud. It'll look like a cloud in the glass and it'll be loads of tiny bubbles. You have to drink it very fast because again it is a gas and it's going to escape into the atmosphere really quick. So in order for you to get the correct therapeutic concentration you have to drink it really fast. So molecular hydrogen like I mentioned it is the smallest element in the universe that we know of right now. It's known as a selective antioxidant. So what that means is it won't go in and attack anything that say not a problem in your body. It's a very smart molecule. If you say have just done a crazy CrossFit workout, that oxidation that you're experiencing from that workout, that's beneficial. That helps you grow. It helps build resiliency. So in that case, molecular hydrogen being a very strong antioxidant it wouldn't attack those inflammatory molecules from your workout because it's selective it's smart but if you got exposed to let's just say a lot of um, diesel fumes from being in traffic the molecular hydrogen would target them because it knows they shouldn't be here, they shouldn't be in your body, they're going to cause DNA damage. So the molecular hydrogen will neutralize those fumes and protect your DNA. So maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but molecular hydrogen is a selective antioxidant, but it's also a signaling molecule. So it signals specific reactions to happen in your body, and it's really, really Really amazing in that it can signal for instance the NRF2 pathway which helps with making sure all your phases of detoxification are upregulated and it supports production of glutathione which is your master antioxidant. Believe it or not even though not a lot of people have heard about molecular hydrogen it's pretty easy to get your hands on it you can buy it on Amazon you can get a really good one off iHerb but there's actually thousands of studies on molecular hydrogen and it's one safety. It does not interact with any other medication or molecules or substances except for one, which I recognized with a client one time. And I looked for the research and I found one supporting study. So I was like, 
maybe I should submit my findings somewhere. So this client, she started taking molecular hydrogen and molecular hydrogen, it really is a miracle supplement. I mean, if you look at the research, it's amazing for kidney disease, gout. I actually use one of my clients with gout. It's amazing for chronic inflammation, fatty liver disease, um, brain trauma, Alzheimer's, like loads of stuff. But this one client, she started taking molecular hydrogen and she started developing all these symptoms. She would get, she was getting rashes all over her body, like in these sporadic places and they were burning and itchy. She was not sleeping. She started getting very kind of anxious feeling like something was happening. Um, she went to her doctor, he couldn't figure it out. And then I was chatting to her and I was like the only new thing that we have added in is molecular hydrogen now molecular hydrogen it's basically a molecule that just wants the best for you it wants you to be as healthy and resilient and clean as you can and it's non-reactive except for one substance and it's a molecular hydrogen it's, even though it's such a small molecule it's very very strong so what happened was this client she actually had steel or metal implants and screws right down her spine and in her hips and the molecular hydrogen started to break down the metal in her body and these reactions that she was seeing the rashes was her body trying to detoxify the metal which is obviously a problem she needs the metal it was helping her walk and helping her spine stay straight so I had to take away the molecular hydrogen and all the symptoms went away but that was like to me that was amazing because I was of course thinking like of everything it could break down God forbid you swallowed something metallic or got something metallic in you molecular hydrogen could reduct this and break it down and help expel it from the body so but molecular hydrogen is my number one because even when i was doing my cancer treatment i had all my faith in molecular hydrogen i was like i i could feel it i know it's working and you can feel it working it has a lot of efficacy for anti-aging skin health liver function like i mentioned upregulating detoxification so lots and lots of efficacy around molecular hydrogen I generally will take one in the morning and then I'm good to go. Um, it takes 10 minutes for molecular hydrogen to be dispersed or dissipate throughout your whole body, through all the tissues. It will penetrate right into every cell membrane within 10 minutes. That means after the 10 minutes, you can go have your tea or your coffee or whatever you want. I do prefer to take it on an empty stomach just so I can get it into the tissues a lot faster without any interruption. There is some research that shows if you take molecular hydrogen on a full stomach or especially after a carb meal, that the hydrogen does get absorbed into the carbs in your stomach so that's kind of pointless so um otherwise there's no other kind of precautions it's very safe unless you have metal throughout your body uh, you want to be careful with that um, it dissolves pretty fast it usually then will last in your body for up to an hour so it's basically doing its magic very fast and for up to an hour then for people who have issues like chronic illnesses or who are going through cancer treatment, I will use it more with them. I might do one in the morning and one in the evening. If the chronic inflammation is very bad and painful, you could do it up to four or six times a day. It's very safe. Um, it's just that's where the cost might start to add up. So that's the molecular hydrogen then. Um, so when I say metal as well, I don't mean braces per se. I mean implants, um, hip and knee pins and stuff like that. So the next one is digestive enzymes. And I'm going a little bit fast, but I want to make sure I cover everything. So digestive enzymes are really overlooked by a lot of people. For one, I use super enzymes. Um, I know many of you ask me for what I use and I personally use super enzymes and I personally use the tablets even though you can get them in capsules I use the tablets because as gross as it is and I was taking them today and I was like this taste this taste smells familiar if that makes sense 
this taste smells familiar. And I was like, what is that? Oh, that taste smells like cat pee. That's what it is. So in the super enzymes, not only do you get the digestive enzymes, so you get your protease, amylase, lipase, all the different digestive enzymes, you also get pepsin, which is like your main digestive enzyme, and you also get ox bile, which is very important. So you can buy ox bile supplements, which is important for people with gallbladder and liver issues, and even pancreas issues bile is very important and bile gets overlooked and you just see it all the time now so many people getting gallstones getting their gallbladder removed having liver issues all the time bile is easily disrupted like really easily disrupted especially with how we live nowadays so in this supplement i'm also getting the bile and that taste that smells like happy that is the bile um, but the reason I, I I don't enjoy the taste but I like the tablets because when you taste it that then sends a signal down your vagus nerve to stimulate upregulation of your own bile and stomach acid and enzyme production so like it's the same idea with apple cider vinegar and tasting it is very important unlike apple cider vinegar pills I've said it a million and one times they don't work, you need to taste it, get over it kind of thing. So with digestive enzymes, for me, I'm thinking, well, apart from inflation and the price of food, we all have stress, even I have stress. And stress, one thing stress is going to do, it's going to affect the gut. Now, the first thing it's going to do is downregulate stomach acid and enzymes. So that means when you eat something, there's a lesser likelihood that you're going to digest it all properly so then you may experience if you're not digesting your food properly you're going to eat something and you're going to run to the bathroom really quick and you're going to have diarrhea apart from the diarrhea and the damage that would cause if you're not digesting your food properly you are going to have malnutrition and then malnutrition is going to present usually the first thing people will see is low energy you can't create energy if you don't have nutrition to create energy because if you're not digesting properly and you're just having diarrhea or you're not absorbing all the nutrients properly you're not giving your body what it needs the next thing with malnutrition we see is apart from no energy that goes hand in hand with no energy means a slow metabolism a slow metabolism means your thyroid's probably being affected once the thyroid's affected, the adrenal's affected. Okay, so we got that. But visually, then your skin starts looking really gray and pasty. And you know when you look at someone and you're like, oh, she doesn't look good. Or you look at someone else and you're like, whoa, she looks really healthy, like she's a picture of health. So that's that kind of glow that you get when you are getting enough nutrition i think i froze there so let me know if i froze if there was any issues hair loss hair loss is huge for malnutrition like it really is the biggest indicator that your body is in some sort of stress because something's blocking the nutrients from getting to the hair follicles so hair loss is a big one with nutrition issues Please let me know that we didn't freeze there and everyone can still hear me because it said I froze and I don't want to be wasting time. Um, so digestive enzymes, really important there. So with the cost of food now, if I'm going to be buying all this expensive food too, I want to make sure I'm absorbing everything out of it, but also because of my cancer history, I want to make sure my body has everything it needs to stay on top of immunity, to keep clearing out and fighting off anything that might come in, but also I want to be strong, I want to have a lot of muscle, so you can't, it's, you're going to struggle to build muscle if you're not absorbing your nutrients properly. Um, okay, hopefully nothing happened there, still no one has commented, so, okay, I'm just going to keep going, if I have to do this, I have to do it. Again, so the next one, so digestive enzymes, before we go on, I like the super enzymes are the ones I like they're by now foods I'll usually take 
two before each meal except on refeed day i could take up to a hundred really there's no real bowel tolerance with enzymes you can usually go pretty high if you did get diarrhea from taking too many of these that would be from the bile it wouldn't be from the enzymes and even taking digestive enzymes when you're fasting that can be very helpful for inflammation and cleaning up um like any sort of scar tissue or damaged proteins that are there so the next one is pure krill oil um so pure krill oil is always interesting because there's so much confusion around omegas omega like so obviously you most people know you can get your omega 369 and people think well that's going to be a good option because i'm getting 369 i'm getting everything well no one you're better off getting nine from foods two six is highly toxic and can drive up inflammation as well and omega 3s from most sources they're they, they can be very inflammatory, like they're generally not clean, they're not purified, they're not processed properly. And that's why I prefer, partially why I prefer pure krill oil. So pure krill oil, no matter what research you look at, pure krill oil is the most bioavailable form of DHA and EPA, and I'm not even going to try tell you the long words because I just make a mess of it every time so DHA is the most abundant fatty acid in your brain there's like 30% DHA in your brain you need it for cognitive performance you need it to keep inflammation low in the brain which is important for preventing Alzheimer's and dementia and everything like that now krill oil not only is it very bioavailable because it comes in phospho phospholipid forms phospholipid is a more preferred form of fatty acid than say the esterified what you would get from a fish oil um, so you'll get fish generally comes in ethyl esters or triglycerides and even though triglycerides sounds like it might be good it's not as bioavailable in the body they both have to be broken down in the small intestine like they have the molecules have to be cleaved apart so you can actually use the EPA and DHA and a lot of the time that doesn't even work very well except the EPA and DHA in krill oil, it's in phospholipid form, which basically doesn't need to be cleaved. It doesn't need to be tore apart. It doesn't need to be broken down. It can penetrate into all the membranes. It can cross the blood brain barrier as well. And it's very, very clean and efficacious. One, because krill is so, so small, the mer mercury content or any sort of toxic content that might be gotten from the sea is like null and void it's almost my new and then you include the processing of it so you get like no mercury or toxins in your pure krill oil you get high high bioavailability and then you also get the added benefits which makes it more efficacious in your body of astaxanthin so when you get pure krill oil it's also bound to the antioxidant astaxanthin which Lori asked me about earlier the other Lori was where do you get astaxanthin because I came across a study that shows that astaxanthin can also protect us against the toxic effects or the damaging cell effects of polyunsaturated fats and the easiest way I kind of explain polyunsaturated fats is like your vegetable oils or your greasy foods so astaxanthin can protect you against that and we get astaxanthin from like our red seafood and krill is a red seafood so it is a carotenoid but we generally get it from seafood so pure krill oil another thing I love it for apart from the brain health and the anti-aging and it can protect you against UV rays and it reverses macular degeneration and it improves night vision and all that great stuff um, pure krill oil also has the anti it's a very strong anti-inflammatory you'll hear me talk about it a lot like it's really really effective um, it would be 
it would be my next go-to after molecular hydrogen it would be krill oil and I would say like increase krill if you've got any pain or anything and I'll even super dose it because krill oil it is an oil so you can kind of think of it like WD-40 even if you've got creaks and aches and pains in your joints or whatever pure krill oil it is going to go in there and support the lubrication and that synovial fluid in between the joints so like it does exactly what it says on the tin it's very very helpful I find it great for like just keeping me I don't want to say lubricated but limber and moving freely and I just notice like my skin is more moist it doesn't get as dry my eyesight I don't wear glasses or anything like my eyesight is really good um, I love it in the summer it's also known as an internal sunscreen because it protects you against UV rays so krill is a big one for me so I like people to at least take a thousand krill first thing in the morning like if they've no health issues right and I just want to get them on that EPA and DHA and make sure they're getting the good fats in there um, I'll, I'll start them with a thousand some people maybe two thousand it depends like I have a, a young client who's like 24 and she has um chronic arthritis so I have her on higher doses so it depends on the client generally though the rule is if someone's experiencing any sort of inflammation or severe pain like bouts of chronic pain or acute pain sorry I will then do like 2000 in the morning maybe 2000 in the evening or if I do a like berberine combination I'll split it up but that's generally how I do it I I do like to um keep keep consistent with krill because once you stop you will notice the difference and even once you start you will notice the difference so krill was my next one moving on really quick alicia you probably know this but you'll find it fascinating if you don't so ginkgo biloba is my next one i take ginkgo like have for years and years ever since i came across research by Dr. Daniel Amen on um, the brain performance benefits of ginkgo really. Um, it's at 60 milligrams twice a day is where the research shows that we can prevent Alzheimer and keep brain health like peaked optimal like no cognitive decline at all. So um, I started taking ginkgo and then the more I looked into it I just loved and loved and loved it in a way ginkgo can be considered an adaptogen an adaptogen helping you be able to manage stress a bit more and be more resilient but here's the awesome part that i really kind of made me go yeah i'm gonna take this for the rest of my life ginkgo or the ginkgo biloba tree was the only plant or tree to survive Hiroshima and the nuclear bombs that went off so once the smoke cleared the ginkgo trees still stood up strong and perfect and on that spot where here the on Hiroshima on the spot now those same trees are still standing that's how resilient and strong they are so then when you start to look into the research you're like geez ginkgo is amazing for the immune system and it does have anti-aging properties but it's very good for your constitution and your resiliency and just kind of giving you that strength to be able to handle life and everything it throws at you so I do use it in those dosages of 60 milligrams twice a day sometimes I will just take the 120 in the morning and I've done that a couple of times and I didn't see any change in performance um, so I, I would be happy with someone taking 120 milligrams in the morning um, I think we're looking at 60% triterpenes in the supplement I can always get people the details later because I just want to keep going and watch the time but ginkgo is one that I take and it is right up there like it's my number four and I take it all the time but that this is for me maybe you'll want to try these because if I haven't recommended this to you before that's because these are mine but now you might be interested to try some of this so the next one is GABA it blows my mind so GABA is GABA amino butyric acid it's an amino 
it's an amino acid of sorts. Basically, it's a neurotransmitter inhibitor. And what that means is when you have these specific feelings or hormones that get released from your body, specifically adrenaline and cortisol, GABA can put up a wall and block them from going any further. So you'll see me recommend GABA a lot for anxiety or someone that is adrenaline dominant, which means they're like, go, 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 just running on adrenaline all the time. And the adrenaline dominance and anxiety will present in kind of the same way and the same symptoms. I think they do go hand in hand. So GABA works very well for both of them. GABA, I, it does surprise me that I talk about this supplement so, so much and I have like posts and podcasts on this that some people still go, no, what's GABA? And I'm like, have you even been following me? Do you know who I am? <laughs> so uh, GABA I recommend a lot. I personally have GABA, but I don't need to take it every day. So GABA is what I consider a medicine. That means we have it and we take it as we need it. So if I get anxiety, let's say I'm going to Obviously, the cancer hospital for a checkup gives me extreme anxiety. Even though I know it's going to be good, I still get anxiety. So I'll take two GABA before that, and it just nips it in the bud. Within five to ten minutes, GABA is effective. It will work. So we have people that will use GABA like that as they need to use it as a medicine. Then there's other people, and I have fell into this category a few times, that have trouble sleeping because their mind is racing and they have all that adrenaline and anxiety and they can't shut their mind off and they can't get into deep sleep. Well, GABA will help most people with that. I'll say most because honestly, of everyone I work with, there's like two people who just they must have so much adrenaline that the GABA just doesn't work no matter how much I throw at it and everything else. But generally for most people, GABA works really, really well. Um, and then I will also, I do have a couple of clients, not many, like two clients that have so much anxiety and they also actually have adrenal fatigue so like they go hand in hand that they need to take GABA in the morning every morning just to help them get through the day just because the anxiety builds up so much and they just can't function a lot of people will ask me if GABA is safe for kids I think from 12 up GABA is perfectly safe anything under 12 I'll look at the height of the child and the size of the child before I'll say yes or no, and then I might do a lower dose. Generally, though, with younger kids, I'm looking at flower essences instead. They seem to be just as, not just as good as GABA, but they are an alternative and can be helpful. Um, so I will use flower essence. So GABA, I, I generally recommend that they are taking in higher doses so this is actually funny I'm just checking that I'm still actually running with someone who's watching so GABA I'll usually recommend that you buy capsules of 700 to 750 because it's easier I've always seen it's efficacious from 750 milligrams upward and it makes sense We've so much anxiety and stress and adrenaline nowadays that people do need the higher doses. So if you can get it in the higher dose capsules, it's easier to dose at that higher level. I did have one client before and she bought GABA in 100 milligram capsules and oh, it was so funny. She's like, this is not working for me. And I was like, how many are you taking? She's like, one. And I was like, well, no, you have to take at least 10 of those because she got such a low dose capsule, but I needed her to take the correct dose. So she ended up having to take 10 a day until it was gone and then she learned her lesson. So GABA generally doesn't interact with other medications. It's pretty safe. Uh, there are some kind of signs I'll look for if your load is too high. Up to 250 milligrams a day is safe with GABA. 
um, if you start noticing any sort of weird sensation of tingling after you take GABA, that means you've taken too much and you need to take a day or two off just to let your body detoxify it and then come back in at a lower dose. That's very, very rare. Like you want to be taking a lot every day. Um, and then it doesn't interact with food or anything, so you can take it pretty much whenever you want. It works really fast, like I said, within five to ten minutes. If you're experiencing anxiety, it's going to help. If you have sleep issues, you struggle to turn your brain off, you have insomnia, GABA is going to be, like, after Tulsi and a few other things, GABA is going to be what I'm going to recommend because it works so well for people. So then... The next one, and the questions seem to, the chat has disappeared, so I'm going to have to check the phone. And those of you who are new that are watching and that are saying, why does she have an accent? It is because um, I'm Irish, that's why. And sometimes the accent is strong, and sometimes it's not strong. I feel it's strong tonight though, so you lucky ducks, you get to enjoy that bit of entertainment too. Okay, so, so far we have molecular hydrogen, digestive enzymes, krill, ginkgo, GABA. The next one is magnesium. Magnesium citrumate is what I take. So citrumate is a blend of magnesium citrate and malate combined. This is made by Thorne Research. Again, Alicia, you've probably heard of this company. They're one of the best supplement companies out there. They're they're renowned worldwide. They're top, top notch doing their own research, creating their own products. So Thorn Research and I use magnesium citrumate, which is actually really affordable. It's like $20 for the bottle and it lasts quite a while. And the reason I like citrumate, so citrate, part of the citric acid cycle, helps with energy production, helps with thyroid and metabolism, so I like the citrate. And then you have the malate, which I've shown, I've seen to be very efficacious for uh, neuropathy, helping with enzyme production in your body, helping with just overall cellular function. So I like the combination there. The, you can get other ones. You could get just citrate. I mean, if I couldn't get citrumate, I would buy citrate or malate. Citrate is generally more expensive, though. I don't know why. It's probably because it is it, like it, it is so efficacious. It's a good form of magnesium. I prefer these before anyone asks. I prefer citrate and malate way over bisglycinate, like way. They will have the relaxing properties as well, while also supporting bowel movements too. But I find them to be way more effective. Bisglycinate, most people will use it because magnesium overall is a muscle relaxant. That's why people, I feel like bisglycinate is the safer form, not that magnesium is even dangerous, but that's why a lot of health professionals will say bisglycinate. But I'm like, hold on, like most people have some sort of inflammatory condition, their metabolism suffering, their thyroid suffering. I want to come in with the good stuff. So I do also have malate for when I need it. Um, and you can buy citrate, but it's a little bit more expensive. Okay, so um, I, I like to take, personally, I will take, that specific one comes on 125 milligrams to capsule, so I'll take one or two, it depends, because my, I already get 80 milligrams of elemental magnesium in my molecular hydrogen, which is a lot, and elemental magnesium is like the most bioavailable form of magnesium. And then I drink a lot of San Pellegrino, so I'm getting a lot of magnesium there. Then if I have my green vegetables, I'm getting magnesium there. So sometimes I might just take two magnesium at night because I feel like this has been a stressful day, I need a bit of support. And the next morning I'll wake up and I'll have like the runs because I had too much magnesium, uh, which is helpful if you're constipated, but not always a good idea either. Thank you, Carla. Um, thank you. I was asking Alicia if it was good. Um, you're good. You're good. It's all good. We can still hear good. Good. Didn't freeze. Everything is working fine. Good, because it froze on my side. 
Uh, and I think I told you before, my teenager runs NASA out of the basement. So sometimes my internet is not that good because he's obviously talking to fucking satellites and stuff out there. Anyway, so that's the form I do like. Elemental magnesium, of course, and then uh, that I get out of molecular hydrogen. And then I do take Epsom salt baths like one to two times a week. I do like magnesium sulfate as well for helping relax my muscles because again, magnesium is a muscle relaxant. Um, Alicia, just while you said there, l is good too. Um, l can be actually really good for cognitive performance. I do like, for those of you that have asked me about cardiovascular issues, uh, irregular heartbeats and stuff, I'll always recommend magnesium because heart palpitations is usually stress and it's magnesium depletion related. But some people who have actually diagnosis of um, irregular heartbeats and cardiovascular issues, magnesium orotate is what we use there. And if you go look at that, like that stuff is very expensive because of what it does. It's a specialized form of magnesium. But um, Alicia, l 3 can be really good for cognitive performance, also for blood flow and blood vessels and stuff. So. Magnesium is great all around. You can't really go wrong. By Optimizers, which is a Canadian company, they make a magnesium complex, which has eight magnesium forms in it. So that's really good if you wanted to just get everything. Okay, I'm flying along now. Um, the next is vitamin D3. The first thing I want to say with vitamin D is that uh, vitamin D is very, very safe. Like, you really can't go... Because I'll ask people to go 10,000 or more international units on vitamin D and people get a bit worried. Vitamin D is very safe. Really, the only way you're overdosing on vitamin D is if you drowned in a bath of vitamin D. Otherwise, you're not going to overdose taking high amounts of vitamin D. Um, so vitamin D, most people know. It gets synthesized when we get sun exposure and gets synthesized through cholesterol in our skin. But because one, we're in the Northern Hemisphere as well now, and two, a lot of our lifestyles don't permit, apart from you, Alicia, a lot of our lifestyles don't permit us to be outside as much as we need to, to get enough vitamin D. So vitamin D, specifically the form we want, that's utilized by our body is vitamin D3. You can get vitamin D2 in supplements. I don't think it's that popular anymore. And you can get vitamin D2 from mushrooms too. But vitamin D3 is what we want. And it helps with our hormones because vitamin D, even though it's called vitamin, it is a hormone. Um, is essential for like sex hormones, essential for our adrenals, it's essential for skin, nails and hair, but it's very important for immunity, which most people don't recognize or even know of. During the pandemic, there was a lot of research, a lot of research went out about vitamin D being used to fight the C words. I'm just, you know what I mean. Um, I don't want to say the full word in case they take down my video and then we lose all this valuable information, but a lot of research did go out showing that high levels of vitamin D help to fight off viruses. So I actually have a client who leaves tomorrow and she's going on like a three month cruise. I was like, I'm so jealous. She's going on a three month cruise and I was like, we were going through making sure she had the correct supplements. Now obviously she can't bring everything, but I wanted her to bring the most important ones. And then I went, you know what? Remember all those cruises had the outbreaks and they weren't allowed dock because everyone was infected? I, I doubt it's gonna happen, but just in case it does, I think you should bring a bottle or two of vitamin D3. So um, vitamin D3 is very important for immunity and now we're going into like cold and flu season. So vitamin D3 is important for many things, but immunity is a big one. Because when you talk about immunity, most people immediately think vitamin C. Well, no, our, our first kind of line of thought should be vitamin D first. And then vitamin D is a very strong anti-inflammatory. 
But again, people don't know this. And that's when I'll do those higher doses because that's where the research shows us like vitamin D is a strong anti-inflammatory at doses of 10,000 international units or more. So vitamin D is a fat soluble nutrient. But that doesn't mean you have to get it in one of those soft gels. You can just get, you know, the little white pills, which are very affordable, like 2 to $3 for a bottle of like 120 or something, and just take it with a meal that has fat in it. So like yogurt, you take your vitamin D, you've got the fat there already. So once there's fat, there is one thing though I will say, I don't like people taking vitamin D later in the day because there is research that shows it may interfere with getting into deep sleep as well. So that's important to note, kind of like B12. Don't take B12 in the evening because it's a stimulant. And what do I always say? Sleep is number one. So vitamin D, uh, really important. Generally, for myself, I'm taking 4,000 international units a day because I do try to get out to the sun, but I'm also stuck in front of like a computer a lot during the day or working a lot, so I'm cognizant of that. And even because of where we live, even if you do get out in the sun, the chances of you getting what you actually need is very slim. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't go out in the sun. No supplement will ever be as good as like our environment, getting sun, getting whole foods or anything. With the sun, you also get the UV rays that are going to stimulate melatonin production, which if you didn't hear my last video, which actually most of you probably didn't, 95% of your melatonin is made in your cells not in your pineal glands, in your cells, and that is done through signaling of infrared rays which we get off the sun. So, um, but vitamin D, really important, and you want to, I encourage most of my clients to pair their vitamin D with K2. Most people know this, uh, K2 made from MK7, it'll say it on the bottle, or you can get vitamin D and K combo, it'll be in one bottle. So vitamin K2, make sure that you don't accumulate so much D that it causes calcification to happen in the arteries. So it's K2 is like a signaling factor. It says, hey, vitamin D, help me get this calcium into the bones where it's supposed to be, or the tissues are not in the arteries or the blood vessels. And that, usually it's a combination. It's like a circle. So you'd have your vitamin D and your calcium, but then you have a ton of stress, which then causes this interruption of the signaling of where that calcium should go. So then the K2 kind of says like, hey, calcium and D3, sh ignore that stress there. Let's just go into the bones so it helps to make sure that happens. So if I have like really young clients, which I do, like in their early 20s, they'll say, do I need K2? And i would be like, you know what? You don't have kids. You still live at home, you don't have a lot of stress, no, you don't need K2 right now, but for the rest of us, yes, we definitely do, and especially with any of my clients that have had a stroke or any sort of cardiovascular issue, for sure, K2, and K2 can be a bit harder to get out of the diet, like you will get some from eggs, you get a tiny bit from green vegetables, and uh, chicken thighs is a good source actually of K2, and then organ meats, which most people don't want to eat. So um, I do have a whole podcast episode on, I think it's titled Why We Combine D3 and K2, which goes into like depth on why it's important to have both of them. But again, if you're like 21 or 22 and you still live at home and you don't have any kids and you're living the high life, you probably don't need K2. You're, you're doing fine the way you are. Okay. Um, krill oil is the bomb, Adina. It is, I told you. And it helps with hydration because it helps with the cell membrane structure because your cell membrane is made of fatty acid. The next, and we're making good time. So I'll finish these and then I'll look for questions. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is such an underrated molecule. Not only does it prevent scurvy, uh, vitamin C is like, so I obviously love my clients to take vitamin C. It's a low hanging fruit. 
it's usually really affordable there's a couple of different ways we can get it um, I like it in effervescent form because vitamin C is a water soluble molecule so it will get into the cells and the tissues easier when it's balanced to water even though there was a lot of talk about liposomal form they're trying to get it past the intestines at that stage I want it to get into your tissues immediately and start helping with like inflammation and white blood cells at the cellular tissue level so as soon as you consume it but vitamin C most people don't know this is very good for boosting progesterone levels most people most women even men have higher estrogen levels than they do progesterone and that's the problem we want the ratios to be fine so generally we will have higher estrogen and like a bit lower progesterone but most people's kind of like this now estrogen is up here and progesterone is down here so then we have all the estrogen dominance issues so if I can bring in something as simple as vitamin C and that also accounts for like your strawberries and your spinach and your oranges and apples they're gonna boost progesterone bringing progesterone up and helping to even out that estrogen dominance those ratios but not only that like what is one of the symptoms of having low progesterone well it's anxiety anxiety the brain racing not being able to turn off worrying about everything I can't focus my mind is just go 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 like all of those that is also a symptom of low progesterone so we can bring in something as simple as vitamin C then I'm going to do that so I really love vitamin C for that and it really does help with a lot of period issues um, blood clotting heavy bleeds the aches and pains like vitamin C such a simple molecule but it's so underrated the research has also shown that vitamin C actually reduces inflammation in the intestines as well so lots of reasons why I like all of these supplements at the very least I like to supplement at a thousand milligrams of vitamin C and because like your body once it's topped up it'll just urinate out or excrete out whatever vitamin C it doesn't need but while you're at that 1000 dose you know that your cells are getting it the immune system the white blood cells are getting it maybe you're penetrating into the intestines the, the hormones are getting it like you're getting good and you're not really leaving much way for error it just kind of covers all angles so I like vitamin C there um, and it can be helpful with um, it can be helpful with immunity I was saying this to someone earlier like vitamin C it'll help with the immune system and keeping it resilient but it won't necessarily stop you from getting sick but if you do get sick with a head cold if you go high dose of vitamin C it can shorten the amount of time that you're sick for so yeah a little bit more confusion there um, Adina what time is it in Australia like shouldn't you be asleep or something uh, next is apple cider vinegar I love talking about this so the first thing I'm going to touch on is the whole teeth thing so there was, there was never any research published that said apple cider vinegar is going to destroy your teeth apple cider vinegar is just as acidic as the vinegar that you get in pickles or white vinegar or rice vinegar if you're from like Ireland and England salt and vinegar chips uh, you would call them fries here and even salt and vinegar crisps slash chips here Lem it's just as acidic as your coffee like I mentioned teas lemon juice even bread like apple cider vinegar it's not the apple cider vinegar it's everything everything is acidic so let's not just kind of target the apple cider vinegar but also sometimes like obviously you get a lot of pushback from people wanting to take apple cider vinegar because it can be quite strong some people are great they're like no it's fine it's not a problem some people are like oh my god I'm gonna die uh, at that stage I'm like don't be a baby just do it unless I see there's actually like 
a sensation of burning or hurting that would indicate they have some sort of tissue damage then I'll look at that but um, apple cider vinegar it's not going to destroy your teeth and even at that I always say to people have like a peppermint tea or a green tea or something beside you so that you can rinse it down as well which also helps with like that kind of oh sensation it really does wake you up it does apple cider vinegar is good for so so many things it has so much research around um, metabolism and fat burning uh, helping break down cholesterol and triglycerides so fatty liver triglycerides being fat in your bloodstream um, cardiovascular issues visceral fat so that dangerous fat that wraps around your organs that's underneath your muscle apple cider vinegar has been shown to help with that apple cider vinegar has been shown to help um, push down hunger which is important um, prevent cravings um, upregulate fat burning because it helps convert white fat into brown adipose tissue which is more readily available so it also then therefore um, increases the amount of mitochondria we have apple cider vinegar I like it because it stimulates the vagus nerve and as we get older this is just such a problem just everyone has gut and digestive issues just everywhere if you can bring in some vinegars it's not going to be a cure-all but it's really going to make a difference so this is where the taste comes in you have to taste the apple cider vinegar once it touches your tongue that taste then is going to signal to the rest of your digestive hormones and mechanisms hey let's start digestion now let's increase our own hydrochloric acid let's increase our bile production let's increase our own pepsin and digestive enzymes so that we can have enough for when we do eat that we're going to be digesting stuff properly and not getting diarrhea and not getting bloating and all these other issues um, which leads me to the bloating part if you have any sort of SIBO or dysbiosis or yeast overgrowth or bacterial overgrowth apple cider vinegar is a mod biotic food so it helps to modulate your gut bacteria which means it will push down the bad and increase the good so there's like loads and loads of benefits I've done loads of posts on it for me I'm taking right now I've been taking actually two to three tablespoons a day because I've been having some bowel issues since the summer of hell where I had um, a diverticulosis flare-up and I'm still trying to come down from that like it's doing pretty well but I did notice that it affected my gallbladder a bit so I've increased my apple cider vinegar and my bile and my shanka piedra and my dandelion and all that good kind of liver and gallbladder supporting stuff so I'll just shoot it it's easy I like salt and vinegar stuff so I just shoot it generally most of my clients just shoot it you can mix it with a bit of water if you want um, one of my clients is mixing it with water and sea salt it's always easier to take apple cider vinegar when it's cold so store it in the fridge as well um, 30 ml is quite a lot Jackie like that's good if I was you I would probably split that I would do 15 mil in the morning and 15 mil in the evening I think you would see better results there uh, when you're looking at fat loss I think that would be better there so this is why <laughs> you can't take the pills you need to taste it also once you've put it into if once you've processed it and put it into a capsule you've also killed off a lot of the enzymes the enzymes are half of the reason why we want apple cider vinegar without enough enzymes you're going to age faster and none of us want to look older than we are so like that's stupid and then the gummies are even stupider so they make the gummies with extracts of apple cider vinegar and sucralose and whatever else they put in it like how does that even make sense what benefits are you supposed to get out of that I always wanted to debate one of these goalie isn't that the company the Golgi or goalie people and be like what are you, like what is going on here that doesn't even make sense at all it's all just a money thing then the last one 
And we'll probably go on for another few minutes because I got a few minutes to spare. The next one is whey protein isolate. This is an important one. One, amino acids are so important. Amino acids are actually the backbone of your immune system. So you do need amino acids like you really do. Amino acids are essential for stem cells as well. Um, but whey protein isolate, I like the isolated form because it's very refined and that makes it hypoallergenic. So you've removed pretty much the whey and the casein. And most of my people that think they have whey issues, they have no problems with whey isolate at all at all. Back to digestion, these amino acids help to stimulate hydrochloric acid as well. Which like if I see someone that has low stomach acid, I'm like, okay, let's have some red meat and we start bringing up that stomach acid. So whey protein isolate is great. Obviously, if you're trying to build muscles, it's great. But you have to remember that if you want to grow or repair anything at all in your body, skin, hair, nails, eyelashes, whatever it is, you break a leg, you want to build bones, 60% of your bones made from protein. You need protein. And because so many people struggle with getting enough protein, I find whey isolate is a really handy tool to use. And with collagen as well. Collagen, like they're really easy to use. And I can get a nice dose of protein in a very bioavailable form. Most people tolerate it really, really well. The ones I recommend, like they taste good. So like it's enjoyable. It's an easy ask of people. So I really like whey protein isolate because a lot of people struggle with protein like they really do we don't struggle with carbs like it's not hard to get some cake in there or some bread like that's pretty easy but to get enough protein is really a, a big struggle for people um, and then there's the cost as well and sometimes you're just not ready you forgot to take the chicken out of the freezer I do that all the time and then at least if you have a good whey protein isolate then you're going to get your amino acids that you need for everything amino acids are so important for like literally everything including your hormones so those are my top 10 if I was to throw in a few more it would be electrolytes and sea salt which is Alicia by the way you probably know this and Adina very 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 important for recovery and muscle function you will not pump out as much power as you should in the gym if you don't have enough minerals uh, collagen I already mentioned that the glycine in collagen actually is a calming molecule so it can help relax you so that's great and acetylcysteine a precursor to our uh, master antioxidant which is glutathione very important for detoxification and obviously immunity and um, neutralizing free radicals and all that colostrum not everyone will need colostrum but I love colostrum check out the video I did with um, Angela Walker of Sovereign Laboratories a couple of weeks ago that's on YouTube and all the podcast well most of the podcast platforms because there's so many of them nowadays I can't keep up uh, serapeptase, another enzyme that I did a podcast on a couple of weeks ago. I like that for inflammation, <coughs> excuse me, scar tissue. I will, I'm sensitive to inflammation, like really sensitive. And inflammation is a driving factor behind diseases and illnesses. So like if I get very stressed, then my inflammation goes up. And I think that's what caused my cancer issues. I had a very extreme time of stress and lo and behold I try to be on top of inflammation as much as possible not just with me with all of my clients as well chlorophyll I love chlorophyll I love chlorophyll just to give me that daily support for binding and detoxification and it's really good for cellulite so yeah um, and then activated charcoal is another binder I like that if I'm purposely trying to detoxify something like alcohol or if I have nausea um, activated charcoal is great for that diarrhea activated charcoal will that my client that's going on the cruise I was like before I let her go I was like oh you're going for three months and you've been it you're going to be visiting all these different locations 
there's a high risk you're going to get food or water poisoning somewhere. So, like, you don't have to get it, but if I was you, I would bring some activated charcoal just in case because it's, there's a high likelihood that's going to happen. Like, their cruise is, like, literally going around the world, and they're ending up in Australia, and then they're coming back somewhere else. Like, I can't even keep up with her. Um, that may just be jealousy talking because I'm still here. Okay, so that was that. Was that helpful to everyone? With my morning margaritas, yeah. Protein cake, protein cake, yeah. I just jacked up coffee with collagen and all my mushroom tinctures. Yeah, don't do coffee afternoon, Alicia. But I will put collagen in my dandelion tea, which I have now. I will put collagen in my Tulsi tea because glycine is a relaxant. It helps push people into deep sleep. So if you combine it with an adaptogen, you've got like a double whammy there. It's really efficacious. Um, glycine. So I heard something else about glycine earlier. Uh, let me think of what it was. I can't remember. So much information. Yes, back and take notes. Um, I don't, I'm a morning coffee person or I would be crazy, yeah. Did you know that every cup of coffee, Alicia, it extends your circadian rhythm by 40 minutes, which is not a good thing, it's a bad thing. Okay, any other questions? I've got like a million messages on Messenger. My favorite collagen supplement is going to be hydrolyzed collagen peptides always. When they're hydrolyzed and refined into peptide form, they're almost enzymes at that stage. So, like, they're super bioavailable. They get right in there and do the job they're supposed to do. Um, so, I Organica, I like it. It works well. It's affordable. You can get the big tub in Costco for, like, $40 or something. Vital proteins make a good one as well. But if you're looking at, like, the cost price, it's a bit different Grassy Lakes do another good one, which is hydrolyzed collagen peptides. But I think the easiest one to get your hands on is going to be um, Organica. And they're a Canadian company as well. I'm pretty sure they are. <sighs> Any other questions? Uh, is salsa an okay solid dressing? Yes, I'll have to get back to that. Um, anything else before I let people go? Silver is another favorite of mine as well. I like silver. Okay, well that was a lot. What is my krill oil brand? What is the one I recommend to clients or what is the one I take? So, the, I, so I, um, I will recommend the I think it's Weber's Natural Royal Red Pure Krill Oil. I don't like that comp like the brand, but that supplement is very, very good and it's affordable. You have to watch the cost price of everything. So that one I like, it's pure krill oil. It's important that you don't buy it from Costco and you watch when you're buying it because there are some counterfeit ones out there. Um, the one, the Royal Red, I don't want to jump up and get it, but the Royal Red one I like, it's Weber's Natural and it only comes in 500 or 1000 milligram capsules. That's it. The counterfeit ones, they come in 750 and 1250 capsules. And it's easy. You look at the back. Krill oil should just say pure krill oil or it'll be euphasia, pure euphasia or something like that. And that's it. And it'll also list the astaxanthin that I mentioned. Whereas the counterfeit ones, they're fish blends. It's usually anchovies mackerel and sardines is the blend there that's not pure krill oil so the bottles look the same but if you look for the amount in the capsules and then the ingredients you're like son of a bitch trying to rip me off so you can get in superstore you can get on amazon you can get at walmart sometimes you can get in sobeys and if anyone knows if you can get it and save on foods let me know i don't go there so it might be there but definitely walmart and superstore have it 
then the one I take, I will take the Royal Red as well, don't get me wrong, but I also sometimes will take Kiva, K-I-V-A, um, and you will get them on Amazon. There's a couple of other ones, but you have to watch cost price. Nutters have one, and it's like $50 for the bottle. That can't be buying that. Then I'm not going to be able to afford my other nine supplements. So, yeah. Molecular hydrogen. Oh, what? Kiva. K-I-V-A. Um, molecular hydrogen. Um, you can get HRW, which is hydrogen-rich water. That's the one that's on Amazon. They have two different ones. They also have raspberry flavor. Don't buy that. The magnesium's lower in that, and I think it's gross. I really didn't feel any change or improvements with that one um so yeah the hrw so it's drink hrw hydrogen rich water and then dr mercola has a really good one but you can only get that on iherb but i really really like that one as well and that one actually produces nano bubbles of hydrogen which is really good like i really like that one um yeah, so that's that for the molecular hydrogen, Jackie. Most people think molecular hydrogen is expensive. So the Dr. Mercola one is $70 for 90 capsule, 90 tablets. And it's an amazing product. So let's do the math. 70 divided by 90. That's like 77 cents per tablet. That's pretty affordable. How much do people spend eating out? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the second question is krill oil okay for seafood allergies i'm going to say it depends on the person because a lot of my clients that have seafood allergies are fine with the high quality krill oil so the kiva one because technically krill is a crustacean and most people don't have their main allergies there but if you got like the royal red one I wouldn't try that one. I would go with the Kiva one first to see. Oh, it's new one. Um, so, but I actually do have clients, and I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass. I do have clients that have seafood allergies, and they're perfectly fine with krill. I, and I always say, Chris, I've said it to you loads of times, if you buy something and you decide you don't like it or you can't take it, let me know, and I will buy it off you. The other alternatives would be, like the next two pure krill oil you'd be looking at, a really good clean cod liver oil obviously that's seafood again but then there's algae oils made from sea algae um, they can be a bit pricey but they're an option as well um, anything else starting to get late now it's almost my bedtime there is another I have lined up another free class I think it's October 16th or something like that on fasting types and do's and don'ts of fasting. You're going to see a lot coming out about fasting now. A lot of talk around fasting and keto. I don't know if you've noticed it. At least you probably have. A lot of health professionals stepping away from um, keto. They're like, keto maybe isn't as good as we thought it was. And oh, dare I say it was a fad. I never said it was a fad. I said it just wasn't for everyone. It's for people with specific medical conditions. But a lot of talk of people stepping away from uh, keto now. You've got Paul Saladino, Thomas DeLauer, Mike Mutzel, a lot of them stepping away from keto, which sucks because of these cookies I have spoke about that I used to love, and the company changed all their cookies to keto cookies, and they were gross, and now nobody's bloody doing keto anymore. So I'm hoping they change them back to the original cookies, and then I'll be happy again. But fasting as well, there's a lot of talk about fasting, so I'm going to do that free class, I think it's October 16th, just kind of going through like understanding fasting, do's and don'ts, um, things to understand about fasting, expectations even around fasting. So yeah, I know keto wasn't your thing, but you might have heard it through the grapevine the same way I did. Keto was never my thing either. I'm all about balance. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that unless someone has one last quick question. I hope you all enjoyed this. Take some notes. This video will be left here. I'll also, once I get around to it, will upload it to YouTube so you can direct people to it there or share 
it to people. That if anyone else does kind of comment, because a lot of people are going to rewatch this like at a later date. If anyone else comments questions, I will answer them there. Otherwise, I think we've covered a lot. That's been quite a lot. Um, I actually am going to take some krill oil and Burberry, no, krill oil and resveratrol now because um, I forgot to take some earlier. Okay, thank you everyone for watching and spending a bit of time with me. I hope you found it helpful and somewhat entertaining and you're kind of going to go off and work on your Irish accent for a bit. So I'll chat to you guys really, really soon. I have some really great videos that need to be uploaded this week of interviews I've done. You'll enjoy them. Otherwise, go start your evening routine, turn off the computers, TVs and all. Good night, everyone. Bye.